if there is a mute button on your screen, so if you can mute yourself until the end, we'll open it up for questions. Also, we are recording this, so it will be available for replay. Um, first of all, I want to welcome everybody here and thank you for investing in your health. I am super excited about our guest and the topic of Deto Detox Made Simple. For those who don't know me, I'm Renee Swayze and uh, I love helping people who feel like crap. So get your pens and paper because this um, information for me personally has simplified the detoxing process. And I'm just super excited to have Dr. Angela and Maureen on. So a little bit of background about them. So Dr. Angela later in life became a naturopathic doctor in Wisconsin. This change in her career path came after more than a decade of her son being sick and finally diagnosed with Lyme disease and her best friend's 10-year fight with breast cancer she sadly lost. Dr. Angela said goodbye as a national franchisees of three Papa Murphy take and bank pizza restaurants and four Subway restaurants to go back to school and study nutrition, healing modalities, and then finally naturopathic school. For seven years, she co-owned a healing center specializing in diet, nutrition, digestion, cancer, detoxification pro programs, massage, massage, colonics, and testing, and she continues to educate, teach, train, and speak on podcasts and worldwide health events. For the past four years, Dr. Angela has co-owned two weight loss and health centers with her friend and business partner, Maureen Henderson. Maureen is an integrative health practitioner who started her education and training seven years ago after her husband became disabled from a traumatic brain injury while well, she was in the middle of her own health crisis due to lifelong history of autoimmune Graves disease. Maureen's training and education started with a focus around brain health and wellness mm -hmm. through Amen University. Yeah. In an attempt to help her husband, and like most people in the field of hol holistic health and wellness, she <clears throat> became more fascinated seeing her remarkable seeing her husband's remarkable improvement. So after her own health struggles post-thyroidectomy, she was further educated through the Health Coach Institute program with a focus on coaching people through thyroid, autoimmune, and weight gain issues. Dr. Angela and Maureen have hundreds of clients throughout the country where they offer customized wellness to weight loss programs, including detox, cleansing, exercise and nutritional genetic testing, as well as coaching people through their dietary guidelines. I remember um, listening to Dr. Dr. Angela on a podcast and when she said, we, we test then guess, that just resonated with me because I was so tired of guessing of what my clients were suffering. And so I, when I reached out to her ever since then, I've been so blessed to know her and Maureen. So I am thanking them tonight to come on here and sharing their wisdom and their knowledge. And I just want to thank you, Dr. Angela and Maureen, and it's all yours. Hey, everyone. Uh, it's so great to see so many people interested in what we're going to talk about tonight. I'm so excited to share what Maureen and I have, you know, really hung our hat on for years, um, but especially having a weight loss clinic setting and working in this industry, detoxing is really kind of the first step. Wouldn't you agree, Maureen? Oh, absolutely. We start every single patient pretty much regardless, even though our programs are customized, we start everybody right here. Yeah, for sure. Um, so we're going to, how, how we're going to do this is I just put together a slideshow because sometimes it's easier 
to see things. You could use your phone and take a few snapshots of maybe of a couple of the slides because there's a lot of information. And I'm going to breeze through it really fast because one, we're recording it. And two, a, a lot of it you may be aware of. And I, I just don't want to like hammer in each slide because we could be here all night talking about this subject. And we could each slide, we could like spend a whole hour on its own talking about. So I'm just going to kind of move through a, a few really important things. So you know, do you need to detox? And when we think of detox, a lot of times we think about these kind of hardcore, um, I'm going to get, can you all see my screen? Okay, good. Um, these hardcore detoxes and cleanses that you've got to, you know, you can't be more than 10 feet away from a bathroom. You're going to be homesick. Um, and we hear horrific stories. I remember way back when, even before I became a naturopath, I was already doing different types of detoxes, everything from, you know, liver gallbladder to water fasting and doing all and taking 96 pills a day and drinking sludge for 10 days. Like I've done it all. And I've always been pretty healthy, but I've had sick people around me and watching them go through where I kind of powered through some of these detoxes, they ended up getting pretty sick. And so we have to be very careful. The sicker you are, the more gentle you have to be when it comes to detoxing and the kind of the longer the healing process can be. But with that said, it doesn't mean you can't feel better just because you're not dying, like, you know, through a detox. And I think a lot of people think, you know, go big or go home. And that's, you really don't have to think like that. And you shouldn't think like that because detoxing too fast can put a lot of stress on the liver and other organs, and it can really disrupt your life. And then you never want to do that again. And then, you know, detoxing is not a one and done thing. We are constantly bombarded with chemicals falling from the sky. As I screamed out last night on a podcast, I didn't know I was unmuted <laughs> and I couldn't believe what I was seeing in the sky um, from our water to our food, what they're spraying on our food to what we're putting on our skin and washing our hair with and brushing our teeth with and the detergents we're washing our sheets and our clothes. And I mean, the list goes on and on. I mean, we're exposed to over 200 chemicals before we even leave our bathroom in the morning. So we are constantly bombarded. So to think that a detox is one and done is silly. Like, kind of why bother um, is my philosophy on that, where it isn't something you have to do every month, but it is something you want to do at least a couple times a year, if not maybe quarterly. So let's talk about, do you need to detox? So I've got some bullet points here, like running out of energy midday, like you should be able to power through your day. Inability to lose weight. Listen, if your liver and your elimination vehicles are not functioning right, Houston, there's a problem. Um, mood swings, you know, mucky gut, mucky brain, hormones aren't working right. Bloating and gassy. I mean, that's a clear sign. <laughs> and that's usually what gets people going, Ooh, something's not right. It's kind of like when we look in the mirror or we're, we're smelly and disrupting in a social environment, we tend to pay attention. Um, maybe the occasional headaches. Don't wait till you get headaches every day or migraines. Like if you get occasional headaches, that's not normal. Um, that brain fog, remember mucky gut, mucky brain, uh, muscle and joint pain, inflammation, uh, bad breath or body order really uh, linked to lung issues, which are linked to kidney, which kidneys is elimination vehicle. So things start backing up and all of a sudden you got gross smelling breath. That's a big problem. Um, age spots, uh, brown spots on your skin, um, jaundice or that yellow hint to the eyes, that's like liver gallbladder stuff, right? So we want to pay attention to, for that. Um, you bruise easily. That can be some male absorption issues. Maybe you're not absorbing certain nutrients. And so therefore, you know, you just bump into something, you got this welt on your arm, you know, you look like you've been, you know, beaten with a bat. Um, maybe you have that pale colored stool. That is not good. Uh, itchy, itchy skin, um, where it's almost painful is a di direct link to the liver, um, ab abdominal swelling, kind of the bloating, but it's more than bloating. Like it's almost painful and it's very distended, kind of that liver belly, um, dark urine that could be, you know, also hydration issues, right? Um, and then poor digestion, which leads to the constipation, which we're going to talk about at the very end of this, because a lot of people don't really understand what constipation is. Um, we're going to talk about that because even diarrhea can be constipation. So it's something's not right. 
Uh, chronic fatigue, that's, you know, we hear that a lot. Chronic uh, fatigue syndrome, you know, just I would say 75% of the people we see, that's one of their number one complaints other than weight issues. And then of course, sleep disturbances. And we really, that needs to be in check because that's when your body heals. So these are all really kind of like early signs of something not being right. Maureen, anything that you can think to add to that or comment? Uh, well, a lot of things, <laughs> but um, you know, like you said, we could be here all night, but those are all um, unfortunately, over time, we start to think those are just normal things. Mm -hmm. And we don't even realize that they're issues. Like we just think that's just how life is. And life is not supposed to be like that. So if, if you do see any things that pop out on that list, um, you know, pay attention to that. And, you know, like, like Dr. Angie said, maybe take a picture of that slide and, um, go through that list and see how many of those symptoms do you have? And you just thought they were just a part of aging because we do not have to have symptoms like that. And sometimes we see, you know, 80, 90 year old people and they're out running around and doing great. And some of us aren't, and we can't figure out why. And we're going to kind of get into that here as we go. Um, and I think we have a, do we have a chat box here? If we do, you know, if there's anything you want to put in here or like a comment, you know, let us know because uh, we'll have a little time afterwards where we can um, also, Renee can kind of field those questions too as we go. Um, so, you know, why do we want to detox? The standard American diet, which has been deemed the acronym, the SAD diet, and rightfully so, it is really sad. It's really sad what happens to the food that they tell us we should eat with what happens in the body. And a friend of mine posted this, uh, something similar to this on Facebook. And I thought, I'm just going to throw it in here because how often are we eating things that have flour and sugar in it and that have flour and sugar together? You know, I always think, you know, I never really fed my kids pancakes. I never really like, I never personally really liked them, but it's like pancakes are kind of a standard breakfast item. I mean, it's, First of all, it's cake, but think about just flour. It is solid in the gut and really it is completely disrupting our, our whole microbiome, um, our gut in general, um, the way our bowels move, candida. You know, if you got a thick pasty tongue, that's more of a white coating. That's a clear indication that you've got some yeast overgrowth. Uh, if you lay on your back and you take your two fingers to each side of the belly button, it's easier if somebody does this to you, but if, or you can do it to somebody because you're not going to get this contraction point. But if you take these two fingers and you go about an inch outside of the belly button and you push and you get a reflex back, that is a sign that there is some candida overgrowth in there. It's a uncontrollable muscle contraction. So a lot of times if people come in to see me, I'll like, I'll just test that point and I'll be like, okay, so tell me what you're eating. Like, are you eating flour? Are you eating things that are high carbohydrates that are more processed and stuff? So um, these things are going to also, we in the list that we had before, I mean, look at how many of eating flours and sugars can lead to pain, inflammation, skin irritations, more sugar cravings and carb cravings, inability to lose weight, yeast infections. And those are ugly, especially women. We see a lot of that um, lack of that mental focus, that brain, that brain power and joint swelling, sleep issues and lack of energy. I mean, this is why we really need to clean things up, kind of take our diet to another level while we're doing this and hopefully make some positive lifestyle and dietary changes in the process. Because to do a detox and a cleanse, whatever you, whatever you want to do, the last thing you want to do, why would you want to take say 30 days and then fall right back into your old habits. It's, it's, you just constantly want to take steps forward. Yeah. You may take some small steps back, but if you're always trying to move forward, you're just, you're going to be so much better off your, your future self, five, 10, 15, 20 years from now is going to be like, I am so glad you woke up to what you were doing. And now the body's working better. Cause there's nothing worse than being in a phase of your life where you wish you would have changed things earlier. And we see that all the time. Okay. So here is just a kind of the, a wheel of issues that we see 
if you if you kind of reverse it, if you don't clean things up, but now if you clean things up, we can start looking, cleaning up the blood because think about this, you guys, the liver is the gatekeeper. Nothing gets into the body without going to the liver first. You got to knock at the liver's door and it will decide what to do and how to do it. And so you want this liver working better. And so by having a, the clean blood, um, you can re your muscle and just this skin and um, tone, less pain, getting toxins removed. We've got to, to get toxins removed out of the body. Yes, it via the liver, but it also goes through the kidneys, the lungs, the, the skin, the lymphatic system, um, sweat. I mean, these are all breathing, our breath. Um, are all detox or elimination vehicles of our body. Um, getting, making sure that the liver and the gut is cleaned up so that we can absorb our nutrients. And actually, if we're, if we're paying for good foods, good supplements and doing all this, we want to make sure that intestinal lining is also healthy. Um, controlling blood pressure. I mean, that's, you know, that's huge. A lot of people have high blood pressure issues, digestive function, um, and then um, getting rid of the impurities that are in the blood and in the intestines through the, through the bowel and the lymph. And then of course, you know, I don't know anybody who doesn't want to reduce body fat just a little, <laughs> and a lot of people, they want to do it a lot. So really to, to kind of take this home from this wheel is really the five keys that I feel, I know Maureen and I together feel these are the things that you want to kind of think about as you're going through um, preparing for a detoxification system. If it's 10 days, 20 days, 30 days or longer clean eating, want to clean it up. Um, and what does that look like? You know, focusing on, I think I always think more like a paleo style diet, focusing on protein women, at least shoot for hundred grams a day, men, at least maybe 130 grams of protein a day. Um, and if you can hit that, you're going to be so much better off with your muscle integrity, but our bodies really need those, that breakdown of amino acids. So, um, making sure you're eating clean with vegetables and, you know, good, healthy, try to do as much organic as possible, a little bit of fruit, um, watching all of the, you know, the dairy and, um, the grains, grains are inflammatory foods. I don't care if it's quinoa, it's a grain oatmeal. It's a form of a grain. It is inflammatory. So that whole thing, like eat your oatmeal, don't eat your oatmeal and yogurt, like yogurt and oatmeal are the two, in my mind, the two of the worst foods, unless you're really like, I like coconut yogurt. If I'm going to do yogurt, I'll do a coconut, non-sweet, non-flavored yogurt, but otherwise be very careful with yogurts. Make your own if you can. Hydration. Hydration is super, super key. Think of your lawn in August, unless you live in Oregon or something where, you know, it's raining all the time. But here where we live, August, our soil is so dry. So imagine if you're not getting enough hydration electrolytes, not just water, but electrolytes, that is going to cause your colon and everything in the intestines to dry up and you're going to have rabbit turds coming out of you. And that is not good. I heard that one third of the weight of your stool is dead bacteria. Now, if you're not pooping once or twice a day and that bacteria it's building up in your colon and it's becoming like cement. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but just think about that. Hydration is really important. Cleanse. We definitely want to cleanse and detox. I like doing the two together because I want the bowels moving when you're detoxing. The last thing you want to do is detox and not have things moving out of the body. Right? So I think the two of them together, and we're going to talk how, what we feel is a really good process and system for you to use. And then movement. Definitely. We're not firm believers that you, you want to hit it hard and do super intense exercise and movement. However, we do need to move. If it's doing stretching, if it's, you know, Pilates, or you can still do some heavy lifting and boot camps, but be very careful, like with your cardio, because cardio, you're just burning calories. You're not necessarily burning fat and it can overwhelm your body and definitely don't do intense exercises while you're detoxing, especially if you're really watching what you're eating and you've cut maybe your calories a little bit, because you want to lose weight in the process too. You want to be very careful not to over uh, stress the body with exercise. 
And these life hacks that we're just talking about, these are going to improve things like sleep. We need sleep to heal. That's when our body wants to heal. That's when we, our liver wants to get rid of excess estrogens and chemicals and toxins and, and start working to eliminate those through the body, um, hormone health and skin health. And then of course, at cellular level, that health, anything to add you guys, can you? Well, one thing I want to say about this whole process too is, and this isn't a doctor bashing, but it, it's just a fact that, you know, I've had clients that have come to me and said, well, I talked to my doctor about doing a detox and they said that that's just kind of the latest buzzword and that's just kind of a fad. And it's like, that's like saying changing the oil in your car is kind of a fad. Like, no, it, it needs to be done. And um, if they if they understood the process and why, but the problem is they don't have the resources to offer a detox to their patients. And so they just, it's the easy thing to do is kind of push it aside. Like it's, it's just not a, a necessity. And there's so many reasons, obviously that it is. And it's a simple thing now that we can get our hands on. It used to be, you know, um, I know Angie and I uh, have spent a fortune buying different detoxes and and like she said, they were complicated and they were gross and it was drink this and at this time and two hours later, take six pills and five hours later, drink this tonic. And it was complicated. So I understand that, but there are simpler ways to do it now. And so, you know, if somebody tries to convince you that it's not important, I hope that, you know, you, you retain some of this information this, so that you can see why it really is. And, you know, we don't want to argue with the doctors, but sometimes they don't have the right answers for everything. So just keep that in mind when you're, if you, if you talk to them about it. And I will also add that just recently, this stands out in my mind because I, I just found this out yesterday. We have a, a client that um, literally has been miserable and he couldn't lose any weight. He, he was so tired, he could hardly function. He's got terrible psoriasis and all these skin things and all these problems. And he finally agreed to do a detox. And in, in 30 days, he's lost 22 pounds. He looks like a whole different person. And so he fired his doctor and he started with a, a new doctor and he's now off of a blood pressure medication and really excited. So detoxing is very important. And um, you're going to find out this is a pretty easy way to do it. And if, yeah, I, can, yeah. if I can add that, um, you know, doctors get a, there's, there's so much weight on medical doctors these days. And I tell my clients and people that I share that with is they are so needed, but they don't know everything. Like they don't have the education for nutrition. They don't have the education that we, that we have, and we wouldn't have jobs and we wouldn't have a specialty if they knew everything. So combining both and having a nice balance is just so needed and to be, and for like a physician to be open to it and just work together. Um, but are the things that we suggest, or I would say I suggest a lot of people will say, well, is there a contraindication or, or this and that? And yes, some do, but it's what your body, you're feeding your body what it needs and what it needs to survive and to work and to function. And on another note is, um, I always tell people, you don't know how bad you feel until you feel good. So, <laughs> so true. Yeah. Yeah. We say that a lot as practitioners and it, being in the health field, that is like, we couldn't say it enough, I think sometimes, but we do say it a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, those are great, great um, points, you guys. Um, but let's talk about hormones in the liver. Um, this is super important. Um, and I'm probably going to have Maureen talk a little bit about this, but I just want to kind of go through this diagram on the left. Um, and then I'm going to have Maureen talk a little bit about thyroid because she she not only is living it, but has done a ton of research and um, it's it's a big problem. But when it comes to thyroid, a lot of people think, you know, oh, I, if I fix my thyroid, I'm going to be well. And, you know, Renee and I, we've done, a, we met because we do a lot of the same training together. And um, it's one of, and school, our, our um, schooling is similar. And it, it, here's the thing. 
there are so many things that impact your thyroid that it's the testing that they do is ridiculous. And it's really hard to fix the thyroid based on how we have in the medical community have decided to work on fixing the thyroid. So we can actually help nourish and have the thyroid operating better by actually not actually diving into the thyroid, but looking at the numbers and then seeing what's impacting those numbers. And so I, just this diagram, the H is the hypothalamus, the P is the pituitary, and the T is the thyroid. So that's the cascade. So the hypothalamus tells the pituitary, hey, go tell the thyroid to get to work. And the pituitary is in the brain and it says, it should say, okay, I'm on my way. And it goes down and it knocks at the thyroid's door and that's its job. So when they are measuring TSH, they're not measuring the thyroid. They're actually measuring how well is the brain getting the message to go down and knock on the thyroid's door and said, hey, thyroid, you need to get to work. This body needs to be warmed up or cooled down or metabolized or something needs to happen here. And there's there's going to be a break point. When you have thyroid issues, There's we need to know, is it a brain point or is it a thyroid point? And so when we look at labs, TSH is like nothing, but the things that are going to impact TSH are going to be things like inflammation, infection, and stress and cortisol. And so think about your light. Like if you're like, boy, is my thyroid bad? Well, kind of get a check and see what's going on with infection. Renee does, you know, she does all that too. She tests and, and walks through labs with people. And then, then you look at the thyroid and you go, okay, the pituitary is doing its job. It's in range. It's doing okay. Or is it over? supplying information or under supplying information. But then when you get to the thyroid, what you have to understand if they're not testing these ranges and there's, I, I didn't, I took off the free T3 and the free T4 for sake of discussion, but free T3, so FT3 and FT4, those you would want tested too. But for the sake of this discussion, thyroid produces, it actually produces three hormones. One is very minute, calcitonin which Marie knows she doesn't produce anymore. Um, and she'll tell you why, but it, um, T4 is the inactive thyroid and our bodies, our thyroid actually produces a large amount of that. But here's the thing. It's not usable until it converts to either T3. And if your liver is a mess or your gut is a mess or both, your T4 conversion to T3, the usable form is going to be down the tubes. And what's going to happen is it's probably going to convert to that reverse T3, which is like a storage that only gets used when the body is in dire need, like in the emergency room or something really negative has happened. Only then will it pull it. So Maureen had, and so when I met, I met Maureen, we've been friends for a long time, but we, we were friends. Like we talk every once in a while. What brought us really close together is she had, uh, she mentioned about her husband having an accident and Maureen, I'll let you kind of take over from here because your story is phenomenal. Well, um, basically my husband was in a catastrophic accident that left him with a traumatic brain injury and, um, you know, instantly your life is turned upside down and that is obviously intense stress that you're, you know, we're, our bodies are made to deal with stress, but not for extended periods of time. It's supposed to be, you know, a, a, the fight or flight thing, you know, you, you have a stress and you deal with it and you move on, but this stress went on and on and on and on. And, um, I had always had, a, a kind of a wonky thyroid. And so this kind of really set it off and it got to the point I almost had a heart attack. So, um, somehow, some way they convinced me that I, the only choice I had was to have it removed. And so I did that and gosh, had I known back then everything that I know now, I would go back and get a do over in a heartbeat. But, um, when they took my thyroid, which is right here, when they took that out, um, they also got my parathyroids, which does all your calcium production. So, I don't have my thyroid to do to, and that's like your, your major hormone that runs most of your, your entire body. And then I don't have my, my calcium production either, which is brain function and everything else. And so, you know, I have to be very careful. I crack my ribs just by leaning on something like things can just really go south fast. 
And then to top it all off, um, come to find out, I also have um, the MTHFR gene mutation, which, so now the thyroid isn't functioning because, you know, that conversion isn't happening. And then I have an MTHFR um, uh, gene mutation, which is basically kind of an enzyme that converts folic acid into a usable form of folate. So it's kind of like the thyroid, you got to have it con a conversion for it to work. And the same thing with this, this other um, enzyme. And so if you're not familiar with the MTHFR gene, it is, um, it, it, it's really becoming kind of a buzzword now too, because they're learning so much about it because such a high percentage of the population has it. And um, it, it depends. Some people, they just don't convert somewhere between 40, 50, 60%. Some people that have a, a double um, mutation like me, I, I don't, like I'm only like converting at like a 20%. So I'm not able to convert my folic acid into a usable form of folate and I didn't have a thyroid and don't have my calcium production. And after all of this happened, I literally was kind of bedridden. Like I couldn't even process a thought. I couldn't hardly get out of bed. My hair was falling out in clumps. I, I literally, I was so depressed because it also causes depression and um, it, it, you know, you're so toxic, you can't detoxify. You're so toxic that you, you know, you, you can't even get your neurotransmitters to work, which are your, your mood and your um, anxiety, depression, even addictions, things like that. So it's just kind of a mess. And it, it was a, a nightmare. And I am so grateful that I have, you know, had resources um, through, you know, Dr. Angie, who, like she said, she was a friend, but I never reached out to her in that way. But after this all happened, it's like, where do you turn? You know, the doctors just kept prescribing another med and another med and another med. And I went from being on zero meds up to six, they were about to prescribe my seventh, which was an antidepressant. So in a matter of eight weeks, I gained 40 pounds, my hair was falling out, I was bedridden, I couldn't work, we had zero income because I was self-employed and my husband obviously was um, disabled with a brain injury. So it was a nightmare and I'm so grateful that I came out of it, but I detox on a much more consistent basis because my body doesn't do it on its own. And so I am so grateful for resources like this where I take some pills, I drink my water and you know, I do a cleanse and my body can detox a lot of this stuff out and it and it you know needs to be able to do that so that I can function like a, a normal functioning person. So when when I hear that somebody says a detox isn't a necessity, I, I just want to cringe because I mean I, it's a necessity for everybody, but we don't know the percentage of how much of a necessity it is for you unless you get testing, which is why back to what um, Renee said earlier that, you know, we test, we don't guess. We want to know, like, do you have a gene mutation like the MTHFR? So um, Renee also has this genetic testing available to her um, so that she can do these tests for people and the, the detoxes that are available through people that have, um, you know, the connections like these two do, so. I think that's pretty much all I had to say. Yeah, her story is pretty phenomenal. And if you're having, if you think you're having thyroid issues, you definitely want to get to the bottom of it. But really, um, we need to get the gut and the liver working because you're not going to convert and maybe test. Um, we even have just a simple MTHFR test too to see where you are on that, as well as a full DNA. Um, I just want to, I want to touch just on the right side here with hormones. I don't know about you guys, but you, everyone here probably knows at least one person and probably a family member that is on a statin and they will put you on a statin just based on age with absolutely zero signs of any kind of history. Like if your cholesterol is 190, they'll be like, but you're 55 and you're not on a statin. Like they, they want to put you on these drugs. And just for sake of argument, 25 years ago, 
the cholesterol normal range was anywhere from about 220 to 230. Today, if it's under 200, they're like tripping over themselves to prescribe you a statin. I want to talk about cholesterol in a whole different way that nobody talks to you about and the importance, you know, if I know we got a couple of men on this call and women, we need testosterone too. And if you are concerned about hormones, the last thing you want to do is do HRT or, you know, bioidentical hormones and not have these things in check because they're not, you may not even work as well. There may be some creams or you know, pellets, I'm not a huge, it, it really depends on you and where your levels are at, but that's a whole nother conversation. But with, when it comes to cholesterol, it is the precursor to all your sex hormones. And we're talking about pregnenolone, progesterone, cortisol, testosterone, estrogen, and DHA, DHEA. And so if you're suppressing your cholesterol, if your cholesterol is 140 and you are, and you're a man, if you think your body is going to do anything with its testosterone, you are crazy. It is not going to, and we, we need cholesterol. The body, I don't, I don't believe God would have made cholesterol. Like our bodies actually produce 3000 milligrams a day of its own. Like cholesterol is so important for the brain, for joints for our gut, I mean, for our hormones, for so many processes in the body. Every cell needs cholesterol. Those every around every single cell is called a lipid uh, membrane. Guess what that's made out of? <laughs> cholesterol. So when you're, you want healthy cells, you better have a he healthy level of cholesterol. For me, my cholesterol runs like 210, 215, two, I've even had it at 220. And I'm like fired up. You know, I'm thinking that's great. And I'm kind of at 57 breezing through for the most part, um, compared to so many people and women I know through menopause three years in, you know, and it's, it, it's really important. So that's really what I wanted just to talk about as far as this slide goes is making sure everyone understands that it, cholesterol is super important, but the liver, you need the liver functioning well to have cholesterol levels maintained as well as blood sugar and stuff like that. Um, okay. Uh, and I, I just want to mention that, um, you know, I studied under Dr. Daniel Amen, who's one of the top brain experts in the country. And he just freaks out when he knows that somebody's on a statin because the statin doesn't know the difference between your good cholesterol or bad cholesterol as they've labeled it. And so your brain is not getting the cholesterol it needs to function. So when your brain isn't functioning, it, it all goes downhill fast. So, and a lot of times high cholesterol is thyroid infection, inflammation. Um, those are all numbers that Renee and, and um, Angie both have access to. So, you know, that's the first place to, to check and see if there's a, a problem there before you go, oh no, the cholesterol is high. It's like, is there an infection? Is the thyroid functioning? Is it just inflammation? Like there's so many other things to look at first. And blood sugar. And then of course, yeah, blood sugar. And then of course, um, there's a lot of things that we can do. And that's this next slide. So before we get into the detox that we are all um, using and excited about, I just want to kind of do some like dietary stuff. Now, a lot of people on this call may actually feel like they have a, a healthy diet. And I would say, just tweak it a little, like maybe do some intermittent fasting or maybe, you know, fully remove dairy and grains or something, but tweaking it a little bit, or even just adding this in wherever you're at, you know, you know, you, and you know, one day might be different than the other, but these are just some rules that we kind of give to our um, patients and clients just to kind of put it in to, you know, an easier way to think about the diet going into a cleanse. And then hopefully after you do a detox and cleanse, you can, you continue to want to eat healthy and like whole foods, so to speak. So focusing on, you know, more fibrous veggies, avoiding the real starchy stuff, white potatoes, corn, you know, those kind of things, overeating a bunch of carrots and peas, you can have them, but in, in maybe smaller amounts, um, you know, even sweet potatoes, you don't want to overdo that. Um, because if you have a, if you have a glucose issue that could trigger something. Um, so we don't want to eat low nutrient veggies. That's something you definitely, um, want to avoid, um, protein, 
it just, you know, really focus on getting that hundred grams for women at, you know, try to make that your bare minimal and men focusing like 130, 150, 160 grams of protein. Um, because men, I, I don't know a man who says, Oh, I don't want to have any muscles when I'm 70, <laughs> you know, they all, they all want to look like that buff, you know, 80 year old who's still lifting, you know, crazy amounts of weight and, you know, looks like he's 60 when he's 85. Um, and fruit, I always say limit fruit, one to two servings, maybe half a cup each or half a cup a, a day um, per serving, focusing more on like the berries, maybe even green apples, green apples with a little cinnamon on it, or even a little sea salt uh, and grapefruit. I'd avoid dried fruit. It often, they it's hard to find dried fruit that they don't add sugar to it. Um, grains, you we talked about like flowers and stuff, even rice um, and pastas and breads, uh, you know, make sure if you're going to eat it, make sure it's limited. And then with uh, gluten, probably gluten-free if you can and pay attention to how you feel. Are you gassy and bloated? If do you get the runs, do you get constipated, like pay attention to what's going on. Maybe keep, if, if you decide to uh, join our detox, um, maybe keep a little journal of how you feel every day and just kind of write down the basic foods you ate. So you can kind of reflect back and you can maybe see a trend down the road and dairy, you know, Humans actually aren't designed to have like dairy the way we eat dairy today. Back in the day, dairy, we had raw dairy. It had all the enzymes in it. So the human body could actually break it down, but they've removed all that because they heat the crap out of it. And now there's nothing in it except mucus. And most of the dairy that's out there is injected with hormones and they're eating genetically modified. Like that's, it's like we're drinking their breast milk. What do we, you know, as um, a mother who is breastfeeding, we have to be conscious of what we're eating because if the baby's gassy, they're getting it from us. So you got to kind of think about the source of the stuff too. So, you know, just have these things in the back of your mind. Um, so I would maybe take a snapshot of this, but you guys have anything to add to, to this? I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Yeah. So there's lots of kind of detoxing and cleanses out there. I mean, there are a ton and I've done several um, and sometimes I hear stuff and I'm just like, oh, no, thank you. Um, but, you know, water cleanses, gallbladder uh, and liver cleanses and detox, juice cleanses, water cleanses. You know, there's so many avoiding sugar, um, social media detoxing and even spiritual detoxing. I mean, there's so many things that can be good for us, but we want results, right? We want, if we're going to spend time and money on something, we want to have measurable results. And honestly, what we're about to just go through really quickly here for you is what I've been doing. Maureen and I've been doing it since May of um, last year. And I just, I'll never turn back. This is the easiest thing I've ever done. And I've never found it. I, I can't even imagine it could get any easier than this. Um, so the company that we use their cleanse and we, their, their genetic testing, we also use, and they, they do have some great products, um, very science-based products, but the detox and cleanse is amazing. Um, so what can you expect? We talked about, you want to make sure the, the kidneys are, are able to excrete the waste. Cause if they're not, it's going to back up that's going to go into the lungs, the lungs, you're going to have horrible breath, congestion, sinus issues. So we have to make sure we're supporting um, the kidneys and, and able to flush stuff out. And so really day one through five is as simple as taking a pill in the morning and a pill at night. That's it. It's even marked on the, on the actual pack. Oh, here, I have it right here. I'll show you guys. So um, it's actually, it comes in a wheel. And there is actually a QR code. It'll take you to a designated website just for this with tips and videos and all kinds of things. But if you look, it's got an AM as for the sun and a PM for the moon. And all you do is tear off each day. And when it's time to change, it changes. So then it goes to two in the morning and three at night. And it does, it's this whole wheel. Like you don't even, we used to have bottles and I'd, I'd have things in baggies on in my purse and like they break and uh just, and then you got to eat them and you can taste them and swallow them it's just disgusting but this is so clean and you can travel with it you can just keep living the life you're living and incorporate this of course we always say 
just take it up a notch if you really want results. But for some people, they're already doing so much of the right stuff that just adding this, it's like, whoo. In days one through five, we like to add the cleanse. And I will tell you, I always have an extra couple of these at my house. Um, because if I have a day where I'm like, I don't know if I went to the, I don't know if I went number two today. And I'm like, uh, I'm waking up and I'm taking one of these. It's a lemon lime flavor. I, I actually, there are days I actually crave it. That's kind of weird. Like, I don't think that's normal, but I am like, I think I need to do one of these today. And then I'm like, gosh, did I poop yesterday? And I'm like, that's probably why my body's craving it. And here's the thing. If you guys do this cleanse, here's a little, uh, yeah. sh oops, sorry, you guys, here's a little tip is if you are frequently constipated, and I'm going to give you some tips on constipation here in, in a few minutes, but start off with just a half a pack a day. So this five day cleanse could, whoopsie, could last anywhere from say, six to 10, maybe even 12 or 13 days, depending on your body and how your body reacts. Like listen to your body. If you're on the toilet more than you think you want to be back off a day, go down to a half a pack for a couple of days. Then you're like, okay, I haven't really gone much. Go to a full pack. So this day one through five is really kind of setting you up for a really healthy detox. Then we go into day six through 20, and it's the same thing. Um, as far as your pills go, you're going to take three pills in the morning, three pills at night, or I'm sorry, two pills in the day, three pills at night. And you're, you can have an extra pack of these around just to randomly, if you need some, if you need one, take it. Otherwise you're just incorporating um, some of the things we've talked about and that's it like morning. And a lot of people, I was over at a girlfriend's house today and I walked, she was showing me her new condo and it's like next to her bed was her detox box. <laughs> so she takes it right away when she wakes up in the morning and she takes it when she goes to bed at night. So she doesn't forget about it. I have people who put it by their toothbrush. I have people who put it next to their blender. Um, so you can really, you know, put it where you won't forget it. Um, and then on the third phase of this is days 21 through 30. So that we're incorporating um, just a few more pills. And this is the gut health, the microbiome defense, the liver and the kidney. So we're really just establishing good gut flora now and kind of just wrapping it all up these last, you know, nine days or so. Um, and it's beautiful. Most people within the first week say they sleep better, their skin is better, their sinuses clear up, their bowels are finally moving, they've lost weight, their their distended gut is gone, their brain fog, they're thinking better. Like so much is happening. Um, and I know Maureen, like she said, she relies on this because of her mentholation issues. I don't have those issues, but for me, I I usually it's kind of my supplement pack. I mean, I incorporate some nutrients based on just hormones and stuff is kind of what I'm focused on in this phase of my life. But this is basically my vitamins. And I take about two weeks off per box and I just start over again because I want my estrogen getting eliminated. I don't want to have a lot of estrogen floating around my body. And, you know, I want toxins. I don't want them getting wrapped up in, in fat and stored where I don't want it. I don't want excess fat either. So for me, this is fabulous. Um, and we recommend it to all of our, all of our clients. Uh, anything you guys have to add to any of that or experience, or you want to share anything? Um, for me, it was whenever I was introduced to this, a lot of detoxes that I've done in the past, they never rebuilt the gut. They never really, it was always detox, 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 but nothing to supplement into it. So that was, uh, what I found the, uh, impressed with, as well as going back to the packets, I always tell clients, start on like a Friday if you're not sure, and then have the weekend, or if you have two days off, just to kind of get in balance, and then you'll be fine after that. So, yeah. but I love it. Very true. So how can you get started? It's super easy, you guys. So just so you know, there is nothing easier, safer, effective, and I will say cost effective. Renee and I both work with a couple companies. They have some great detox systems. I've done it, but I will tell you most of our patients won't finish it. It's too much, too long, and very, very pricey. And I have found that I get as good, if not even better results, because people are compliant and they stick to it um, with this detox. 
they actually have, if you look over here on the right, it's normally $189.99, but they have a VIP membership. It's like a Costco membership. It's $19.95 for a full year of discounts. You could actually do that and put it on subscription and save 20% and do, you could do a uh, four times a year and just sign up for that and get it every quarter. I mean, remember we're pounded. I, I mean, I got lights that are pounding me and creating toxins in my body, carpets, uh, just everywhere we go, everything we do, we're completely vulnerable to toxins and chemicals and just stress alone creates such a disturbance in our, in our liver and our gut. So um, the VIP, that's what we recommend to a lot of our patients and we just put them on it and they get it every four weeks. And it's just a great kind of reminder that oh, time to detox, you know, um, and it, Renee, and I'm happy to do a three-way call with anybody, Renee, if they want to, you know, if they have questions or they want to dive in, because there's probably a lot of people who have their own personal health journey mm -hmm. um, that they might have some specific questions. Um, so just some extra tips while we kind of, um, I just made some notes today about constipation, because that's the thing we see so much of. So I just wanted to, I wrote some notes here because I don't want to forget any of this out. But a lot of times when we have constipation, we are, it's really a sign that we have some low, the good, healthy bacteria for the gut. We don't have that. Now that's not the full answer. So you don't want to go and buy some, you know, pre or, um, uh, probiotics and just like take a whole bunch of them and think that's all you have to do. Um, but it is, if you've been on antibiotics or, you know, once in your life or 10 times, you've probably destroyed that gut. And if you haven't re-inoculated it or paid attention to feeding the probiotics to it, um, those pro prebiotics can be really important. Um, we talked about the stool, about half of that weight of the stool being dead bacteria. So imagine if you're constipated, like we want to move that stool. We got to get it out there. If you were to take your intestines and stretch them out, it could go the almost the full length of a football field. Like that's in here. So it's crazy. There's a lot of room for opportunists to take over and run the show in not a good way. Um, if you're on acid blockers, especially if you've been on like, um, it's, it's my, it's a medication that I know all too well. And it is like a nemesis to me. I just, uh, this drug, I, I despise it, but omeprazole or Nexium, these acid blockers, they will destroy your gut. They halt your digestive system and your gut, you are very vulnerable to a lot of type of in gut infections and stuff and just weight and other issues and liver and, de and um, toxic overload. If you've been on those a long time, I'm not telling you, you get off of them. Um, this is not to, you know, say that we can treat, cure, or do anything for anybody, but we want to help support the, the detoxification pathways in the liver. And those things are very harmful to the body. Um, hydration, super important. We have a fabulous hydration drink, um, that we use in our practice. Um, it's through the same company. So you can get that same 20% off. If you ordered the hydrate lemon lime is our favorite. It's really good. Um, and then 20 grams of fiber a day. Like most people maybe get about five grams of fiber a day. You want to shoot for about 20 grams of fiber a day um, and just eat more vegetables cooked or raw. Um, walking, twisting, you know, certain yoga moves can be really good and, and stretching. Um, get a squatty potty for the toilet. I wish I could carry mine in my car because I'll tell you, all I got I'll put, I'll get a garbage can and put my feet on the garbage can. And it's like, boom, everything just flows right out. So, um, and I did hear something. Um, if you are uh, chronically constipated, you, what can help, and it can take a long time because it's about, it's about the, the neuro connection is go sit on the toilet the same time every day for 10 minutes. If you go or don't go, you have to retrain that pathway. So if you get your squatty potty and seven o'clock AM or six 30, whatever it is, it's like, take a book. Men, men have no problem doing that. But women were like, we got to go, we got to run. We got kids. We got that, 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 that. Maybe this is your meditation time. <laughs> Pastor oil packs. I just ordered some from this company. I can get the, the link to Renee. Um, She's a naturopathic doctor who created these packs. I know I just ordered Marine one um, and I ordered some for us. So I can get you that link. It's um, the queen 
oh, I can't remember, something the queen, I'll get it to you if anyone asks, but doing a castor oil packs, um, this is a very clean way to do it, but those, I just go on YouTube and start looking up castor oil packs. They're, they're phenomenal for our health. And um, then alcohol, we really want to watch alcohol because alcohol really is a poison. It shuts down the digestive system because it will process alcohol. And listen, I, there's nobody who likes to have a couple cocktails and have some fun more than me. Well, maybe a couple people, but I am like, I'm like that. I don't, I like to enjoy a couple cocktails every now and then, but I have just learned through menopause that I just can't do it anymore. And when you find out why you understand, but all you need to know is if you're detoxing, try to really limit the amount of alcohol you're bringing in. Cause it, let's, let's really like take advantage of this time and detox the body and get your liver working better. You can drink afterwards, but you know, give it a break for 30 days and, you know, or very minimal alcohol, but that's, that's really all I've got. I don't know if you guys have any last thoughts or if anybody, we can stand a little bit longer. If people have some questions. Well, what if Dr. Angela, what if someone is on medication, should they avoid detoxing? Well, you know, medications are one of the best reasons to detox um, because there's a lot of chemicals that are in the medications that the body can't break down. It's It kind of goes back to once you're on one med, there every single medication, even thyroid medication, even insulin, all of these medications have side effects, every single one. There's not one out there that has zero, zero side effects. So often one med leads to two, leads to three. And, and as we age, you know, before you know it, the average like 70 year old is on, you know, four to seven meds. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I definitely, uh, we see it in labs. I know. No, yeah. but I will say that, um, if you are there, it's not going to have any contraindications really with your meds, but it could, they could actually, um, work better. Mm -hmm. So like if all of a sudden you're feeling a little dizzy, well, maybe your blood pressure medication needs to be reduced. Or if you're feeling a little anxious, like your heart's fluttering and you're on thyroid med, maybe you need to reduce your thyroid med a little bit. Like, you know, you, you know, your body and you just have to kind of be in tune to it. But, um, I have not had any problem with it. And we have, well, we have a lot of clients on a detox that are on a lot of meds. We have people that were on 25 different prescription meds and um, went through the detox. So okay. um, I don't think there's any specific contraindications. Oh, yeah. I will also add that some people, if they're really sick, like I, I was really toxic and um, I didn't know I was that bad because I've been working on my health for several years. But, you know, I also didn't know I had this double mutation with the MTHFR gene and um, you know, all the thyroid stuff that had been going on. So you could feel a little sick the first few days yes. when you're detoxing. So a lot of times I tell people, you might start with the detox pills and give yourself a week and kind of clear some stuff out and then maybe go to the detox, uh, the cleanse packets. Mm -hmm. So everyone's a little bit different, but you know, they can always talk with you about, you know, Absolutely. where they're at with their health and then you can kind of direct them with that, of course, but that's how I usually do it. Now I don't have that problem, but when I first did a detox, it was a noticeable, um, discomfort, but then once I got through it, it was like, oh, I'll never not do it again. Mm -hmm. Well, and Maureen hit a really good point too, is if you are on medications, pay attention because if you start kind of feeling better and then all of a sudden you feel worse, you probably do need to call up your doctor and say, listen, I've changed some things in my diet. If you tell them you're detoxing, they'll probably be like, stop, <laughs> but you might want to say, listen, I'm cleaning up my diet and I'm doing some things because chances are it's that you're getting too much of that medication now, mm -hmm. but don't power through it. If it's something you're concerned about, you want to get it checked. Don't just, you know, ignore it because a lot of times, I mean, we do work with a lot of patients who are on a lot of meds and that is our number one rule is you've got to be in communication and pay attention or you take a couple of days off because some people are really toxic and they have no idea depending on what do they do for work? Are they completely, you know, are they in a toxic environment at work and they really haven't paid attention to that? They could be really unleashing a lot of toxins and the liver is going, it's going to put you out. 
and the body is designed to tell you when it needs to rest and when it needs to heal. And if it kicks your butt, that's a sign that it's kicking my butt for a reason. Um, and, you know, go to bed, take a, you know, take a shower and get, get some rest. It's, you know, your body needs, it's like a dog that when they're sick, animals know, and our intuitiveness knows you just have as humans, we forget to listen to it because we got to power through. <laughs> Well, I want to be mindful of everybody's time. So if anybody has any questions, if you two can stay on for a minute or two and see, but um, if anybody has to go, you know, just make it a great night and just, you know, get detoxing. So, but thank you both for being here. Anybody have any questions at all? <laughs>